All right, guys. I don't know what happened to the footage. Lost some footage. Made the chicken stock video for you guys. Intro, gone. Outro, gone. Don't ask me. I'm not a tech expert, but all I know is if you want to make a dope chicken stock like mine, tag along and let's get cooking. For this recipe, we'll be using chicken backs and chicken necks. You definitely want to get something that still has a little bit of meat attached to it, so the meat browns as it roasts. We're going to pop the bones in an oven that's been preheated to 375 degrees. Once they start browning like this, we're going to take them out of the oven and flip them. We'll be roasting and flipping every 30 minutes or so to make sure all the bones brown evenly and there is no pale spots. In the meantime, we'll be getting our mirror paw ready, which means we'll be chopping up some onions, carrots and celery. We start by cleaning the onions, cutting them in half, peeling them, getting rid of their skin, then chopping them in half again. Then we'll want to cut the halves into quarters. After that, we'll start chopping our carrots and celery. We want to make sure all our vegetables are about the same size so they brown evenly. After the second flip of our bones, we want to scatter our vegetables all throughout our bones, just like that. We want to make sure our vegetables are evenly dispersed throughout our tray. Again, we're looking for even browning on the vegetables and the bones. Once all our vegetables are on the tray, don't forget any of them veggies. Once all of our vegetables are on the tray, we want to again flip our bones and make sure our vegetables get covered with all of that chicken fat that's dripped to the bottom of the pan. Back in the oven they go. In the meantime, we'll get two bunches of thyme, about 10 garlic cloves, and about 20 peppercorns or two tablespoons of peppercorns ready. Now, after a couple turns and about an hour and a half in the oven, our bones should look like this. A deep golden brown color. Now that our bones and vegetables have been roasted, we have our aromatics ready. It's time to make the stock. We'll have to put everything that's on the tray, obviously, in the stock pot. So we'll take all the bones and put them in one by one. Careful to not burn your hands. Then we'll take all of our vegetables and scrape as much as we can into that stock pot. Don't worry too much about leaving behind all of those brown bits on the tray. I'll show you a little trick in a second. We'll be deglazing that pan, which means we'll add some water to it and scrape off all those brown bits we talked about earlier. Now that water that you pour into the pan is going to soften all those brown bits and it's going to make it so much easier to scrape them off. After a couple minutes of scraping you can see all those brown bits coming off the tray and into that water. We're going to take all of that delicious golden liquid and pour it into our stock pot. And that's why we didn't put any parchment on the pan. Now we'll start adding water to our stock pot. Now there's a lot of people that say that cold water is better for your stock. You should never put hot water into your stock pot. I really think this rule only applies if you're trying to make a very clear stock. Once your bones are completely covered with water, we're going to simmer that bad boy for about three hours. And whatever you do, simmer it, never boil it. Our next step is to strain that stock. Now you can take all the bones and solids out before you strain it or you can just skim the top and pour it through a fine mesh sieve. Once you've strained it, you want to transfer that stock to a freezer safe container in case you're going to freeze it. If not, you can store it in a mason jar, store it in a ziplock bag, I don't really care what you store it in, as long as it doesn't leak. Alright, 
and here's her mediocre outro. Like I said before, I lost all the footage, but here is a finished product. Chicken stock, it's been frozen, extremely versatile, make tons, throw it in the freezer. Next time you want to make a risotto, pull it out, boom, there you go. Comment below what you think I should make next, like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.